Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Battling and Beating Cancer. Uh, this is our program where we talk about issues of importance to people impacted by cancer. And last week on our show, we learned from Dr. Kaufman that two out of three people diagnosed with cancer actually beat the disease, and beating cancer is what this show is all about. Uh, I'm Scott Seaman, a 12-year survivor of non-Hodgkin lymphoma and co-founder of the Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation. And to compensate for the dimness on your screen, which happens to be me, we have a bright and shiny star, Charlene McMahon, who is the co-founder of the Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation, co-author of Battling and Beating Cancer, the Cancer Survival Book, and uh, she also is a Jefferson Award winner. Charlene, welcome to the show. Thank you, Scott. This is the only place I get compliments, so thank you so much. I love this place. But I do it once a week, so at least I'm consistent. Uh, let's just talk for a moment. By now, you know Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we're an all-volunteer organization committed to curing lymphoma, leukemia, and myeloma. And uh, you can reach us at 888-792-9992 or on the World Wide Web at www.chicagobloodcancer.org. And give us a call if you are impacted by blood cancer, if you have any questions, uh, particularly questions that you don't want to ask on the air, or if you have any comments or suggestions for our future mm -hmm. programs, we would love to hear from you either on, uh, on our website or by telephone. Uh, basically, tonight's show is dedicated to stem cell transplantation. And our special guest is Dr. Henry Fung. And Dr. Fung is one of the best in the business in stem cell transplantation. He is the director of the section of stem cell transplantation at Rush University Medical Center. And he's a terrific man as well as a fine doctor. And uh, in a couple minutes, Charlene and Dr. Fung will get into uh, the topic of stem cell transplants. But before Charlene gives me the boot and trades up for <laughs> Dr. Fung, let's just talk for a couple minutes about our keys to uh, for surviving cancer segment. And we've talked before on this program about the importance of getting the best doctors that you can get and getting the best treatment for you, the most effective treatment that you can get, and the fact that you need to do your research and be knowledgeable in order to get that. But tonight we want to mm. talk about something else, which is to uh, avoid the uh, side effects and the downfalls from the side effects of treatment because so many patients don't die from actual cancer but sometimes along the way from the treatments so there's a lot of things that you need to do when you're undergoing treatment first and foremost obviously is you want to avoid getting infections particularly when your blood counts are low so stay away from people who are sick uh, keep wash your hands frequently keep those antibacterial wipes with you all the time when I used to get home Charlene used to hose me down she was like sergeant clean <laughs> the other thing is uh, stay away from crowds so for example in my case that was easy I'm a lawyer nobody wants to associate with me but I know some of you out there actually have personalities so <laughs> stay away from crowds and if you have to be in a crowd wear a mask and Charlene uh, sometimes made me wear, wear a mask, and I was awfully embarrassed to do that at first. But then when I'd go on a train, uh, and I realized that I always had the seat to myself because nobody wanted to sit <laughs> next to me, I realized, hey, there's some fringe benefits to that. The other thing is to ask your doctor about what the side effects to watch for are, what the signs are, and what to do when you get those side effects. There are lots of medications to help you with side effects, some great medicines to help you with nausea and some of those symptoms. Uh, there are um, shots that you can take to boost your red counts, your white counts, and your blue counts. Dr. Fung is looking at me funny because you don't counts. have blue counts. <laughs> They're platelets, but there are shots to help you through all of those things. Uh, there are medicines. And the other thing is when you're undergoing treatment, uh, you should have a doctor or a nurse that you can reach by phone whenever you need them 24-7. Mm -hmm. And make sure you get that number. And all the good doctors will have some uh, structure in place so that you can get that. Uh, so we're going to talk about stem cell transplants tonight. And this is a very important treatment, not only for people with blood cancer, but other forms of cancer as well. And it could be a difficult treatment because, as Charlene and Dr. Fung will get into shortly, there are some side effects and some issues associated with a high-dose uh, chemotherapy that's often required. But not only can stem cell uh, transplants offer you remission, they can be potentially a cure and give you a brand new immune system. So get online right now if you have any questions, uh, call 
ask them to Dr. Henry Fung, 738-1060 is the phone number. Uh, and before we get into stem cell transplants, Charlene is going to talk to you about what the Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation and what people in Chicago are doing to fight back. Good evening, and thank you, Scott. He was trying to be a little patriotic with the red, white, and blue blood cells. I thought that was a good touch. Yeah, well, yeah, but when it, whatever, hun. So, <laughs> um, before I get into uh, introducing Dr. Fun, I like to go into our what Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation is doing our Out for uh, Blood Ride uh, bike, bike ride. Join Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation's Out for Blood team for the North Shore County uh, Century bike ride on Sunday, September 12th. Ride as, as far as you would like, up to 100 miles. We're not bike riders, but some people are, and, and we will be there regardless. The ride starts at Evanston Township High School, and flexible morning start time, so you don't have to, uh, ri you don't have to ride, basically. If you're not a bike rider, too, you can par participate by forming a virtual vampire team online. And we call it Pedal to Cure Lymphoma, Leukemia, Myeloma, Proceeds Benefit Lymphoma, Leukemia, and Myeloma Research at Leading Chicago Area Com uh, Medical Research Hospitals. So, uh, again, you can uh, reach us at uh, Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation, and it's www, Chicago Blood Cancer Organization. And um, I'm going to introduce Dr. Henry Fung now. Hello, Dr. Fung. How are you doing tonight? Uh, Dr. Fung is a professor of blood and bone marrow transplantation in medicine at, and director of the section of stem cell transplantation um, at Rush University Medical Center. Dr. Fung ha uh, has exp extensive experience in treatment of lymphoma, leukemia, and myeloma, and his uh, use of stem cell transplantation for these hematology disorders. He is a terrific man. And he's our friend, and uh, Dr. Henry Fun, welcome to Battling and Beating Cancer. Thank you very much for having me here today, and appreciate very much your kind introductions. Okay, I'm going to start out just with uh, some of the general information, and if you could tell our viewers, and if we have any callers, please call in to ask uh, Dr. Fung for any questions, 312-738-1060. Uh, and I'm going to start out by asking Dr. Fong, what are stem cells and what do they do for your body? Stem cells is uh, also uh, called bone marrow cells and it's in a bone marrow. Bone marrow is the middle part of our bone and we also call it the liquid part of the bone. And in the bone marrow, we are all different types of cells. One type of cell is called stem cells. Stem cells can make red cells for carrying oxygen immune cells for fighting infections, and platelets for clotting. And they have a very unique characteristics that they can regenerate again and again and again up to almost like 1,000 years. So we have a lot of stem cells in our body that can sustain our body and everyone needs these cells to live. Okay. Uh, there's another question uh, we get a lot of times, and what is the difference? Because a lot of people think bone marrow transplant and stem cell transplants are different. But I mean, pretty much the procedures are different, but you get the same uh, benefit from them. So we have been doing bone marrow transplant, believe it or not, uh, um, uh, more than half a century. So sometimes the patients say maybe this is an experimental treatment, but anything that has been done for more than 50 years is not an experimental treatment at all. And we used to do bone marrow transplants because uh, we will uh, go to the bone marrow. Usually it's the, at the pelvic bone. And then we stick a ladle in the bone and we told the patient that this is uh, well, it's a, a painless procedure. We will try to aspirate the bone melt from your bone, which is, in fact, when they go to sleep, when we're doing the procedure, of course, there's no pain. Mm -hmm. But then, it's, in fact, it's really a, a somewhat painful procedure. But what we're trying to do is aspirate the stem cells. But when we try to go into the bone, what we obtained is uh, blood cells, uh, just blood, and some stem cells. So it's not specific. And what we need for a uh, bone marrow transplant is stem cells. But nowadays, we avoid the procedure. We get high quality stem cells by calling uh, the stem cells come out from the bone marrow in the blood. And then we can take it out from the blood and ending up this is a more effective procedure and also has significantly decreased the toxicity and side effects from this types of treatment. And it's very important what Scott has said earlier, when we look at a procedure, a treatment approach, it's very important to look at the side effects. 
and there's always a risk and benefit. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as the difference between uh, some of the blood so uh, stem cells, uh, there's the patient stem cells, and then there's what's the dis disadvantages and the advantages of having your, uh, your own blood cells compared to somebody else's or relatives? Maybe you can uh, kind of explain that. A good question. We have many two types of stem cell transplant. One is called autologous, which is using the patient's own stem cells. Then how, uh, how it works and why it works is we have learned that for many years that if we use very high dose of chemotherapy, like uh, you have a stronger army that it work better, more soldiers. And but these high dose chemotherapy will permanently damage the stem cells. So if we don't have stem cells, we cannot live. And the technology of stem cell transplant using patients' own stem cells is that we can save these stem cells, we can put it aside, put it in a refrigerator, and uh, we can keep them for decades. And after giving high dose chemotherapy, we can reinfuse these stem cells in the patient's body, and then uh, they will regenerate again, and then they will go back to a normal stem cell and bone marrow function. This is called autologous stem cell transplant. We call it transplant, but in fact, it's not truly transplanting like, like an organ. So this is from the patient, therefore there's no rejection. When we talk about a kidney transplant, a heart transplant from someone else, then that will be uh, rejections. When we're talking about uh, from a, uh, a donors, then uh, if there's no rejection, why we focus on a donors, the donors, what we call allogenetic stem cell transplant, it could be from your brother, your sister, and it could be also from an unrelated donor. Sometimes we use, uh, also use embryo cord blood transplant. And why we're we using that one? If the bone marrow function already suck, it doesn't work anymore, then we cannot use it anymore. This could be damage from radiation, damage from chemotherapy, and there's also uh, that when we're talking about leukemia, such as leukemia, the primary problem, this is a blood cancer, bone marrow cancer, then it doesn't work well, well to using the patient's own stem cells. If we're talking about lymphoma, the lymphoma, some of them really do not involve the bone marrow, do not involve the, uh, uh, the stem cells, then this will be a good option for the patient without rejection. And also, it's very interesting that uh, our body, in fact, is always trying to prevent cancer, prevent blood cancer, from our own immune system. If patient has lymphoma, leukemia, a lot of time is out, their immune system doesn't work. So a simple-minded transplant doctor will say, let's replace the malfunction, abnormal bone marrow, abnormal immune system with a brand new immune system. And the brand new immune system go to the body, will look at these cancer cells, enemy, these are enemy and they will get rid of all the cancer cells. So it's a form of what we call a immune therapy. But the downside is always a, a good and bad. Risk and benefit is that could be rejection. And sometimes uh, there are two sides of rejections in a stem cell transplant. Is the, the patient's body may reject the stem cells or the uh, new stem cells go into the patient's body, look at the skin, look at the um, the colon, look at the lung, the kidney, uh, these are not mine, and then mm -hmm. start rejecting them, and we call this graft versus host disease. It's a form of rejections.